Pioneers Throughout human history, pioneers have always been met with doubt. Those who dare to think outside the box and challenge current narratives always put themselves at risk of ridicule. As when something new arises which challenges our beliefs, it's often easiest to laugh it off rather than to confront it. But it is because of the pioneers that our species advanced, that despite the mockery, they believed in their ideas and proved that the impossible is indeed possible. In Trackmania speedrunning, this is no different. For over 13 years, players have continuously improved and pushed the limits of what was thought to be possible. But still, despite all the advancements players made, there was one shortcut idea that remained so far-fetched that everyone thought it couldn't be done. And then, it happened. This is the story of the impossible shortcut on Trackmania's D07 race. Let's start by taking a look at the track. D07 race starts off with a series of jumps up to the first checkpoint. Then it drops down into a dirt area where you drive over this red block. This block is an engine off block that shuts off your car's engine. Once you touch it, the car will just slowly roll all the way until you reach the next checkpoint, where the engine turns back on. After that, the track takes a sharp left turn, goes through a loop, and across a high speed platform part. And then it ends with another drop into a dirt area, a sharp turn onto the road, another engine off block, and one final sharp dirt corner where you have just barely enough speed to reach the finish line. D07 race is a rather unconventional track, and in order to get a good time on it, you need to master many aspects of track mania. But one thing was readily apparent. Driving over engine off blocks is very slow, and track mania is all about going as fast as possible. So already on the launch day of track mania nations forever, the player lodges and managed to find a shortcut. After picking up the first checkpoint, Logism slowed down and went off the track to the right, then drove around the dirt mountain and rejoined the track just before the second checkpoint, skipping the engine off block and saving around 3 seconds. After that, he drove the best lines that he could and he clocked in a time of 54.91, the day 1 world record. In the early days, this was the way to go fast on the 07 race. The news of the shortcut quickly spread in the community, as it was one of the first big shortcuts found in the game, and many players tried to compete for the world record in the following days. Once the dust had settled, the record had dropped over 3 seconds, now standing at a 5166 set by Marius89. Marius had gained time consistently over Logism's run throughout the track, but the main improvements were a smoother first shortcut and also a better final turn. Players had discovered that because of the engine off block in the ending, taking a wide line in the last turn was faster, because the car would roll faster up the hill towards the finish. After Marius' record, things quieted down on the 07 for the next little while. But one year later, in May of 2009, the player Kubayan discovered an even faster shortcut approach. After driving through the first checkpoint, Kubayan jumped out to the right immediately and went on top of the dirt mountain instead of driving around it like the other players had done. He then beelined towards the checkpoint, bounced into it, and respawned. Doing this, he reached the checkpoint way sooner, but because he respawned, he had no speed for the next part, and he almost got caught up to again. Still, it was an overall net time gain, and he managed to hold the lead and finished with a 51.32, setting a new world record on the track. But that was just the beginning because once other players saw the true potential of the new shortcut approach, a big world record battle ensued, and in the span of the next two years, the record was lowered all the way down to a 5027 set by Epic, over one second faster than Kuba's original shortcut time. Epic's record though was something else. At the time he drove it in October of 2010, he had beaten the competition by a whopping 44 hundredths of a second. His run seemed close to perfect, getting a fast shortcut in the start, and driving cleanly throughout the track overall, and very few players dared to challenge it. His record would go on to stand for over 3 years unbeaten, until finally, in December of 2013, a new battle ensued. This time there wasn't any big catalyst that caused the hype around D07, but that month, several players were drawn to the track. On the 3rd of December 2013, the player Kenny KJC would be the first to strike, 
when he finally managed to beat Epic's legendary record, inching out just four hundredths of a second in the final turn, and beating one of the oldest world records in the game. Kenny himself, though, would not hold on to the throne for long, because just four days later, Eriulu entered the battle, and beat Kenny's record by four hundredths of a second, with a 50.19 run. But only four days after that again, the player Race Hans joined the fray, and beat Riulu with a new world record of 50.10. Riulu though wasn't having it, and only two days later, he entered back with a bomb of a run, 49.87, breaking the 50 second barrier on the track, and beating Race Hans by 23 hundredths of a second, without any new strategies. Riulu had just consistently gained time throughout the run, by driving very optimally and set a very strong record on the track. But Race Hans welcomed the challenge, and just 9 days later, on the 22nd of December, he answered back, with a 49.83. This time, Race Hans had gotten a near perfect start, getting far ahead of Ryulu after the respawn, and though he lost a little bit of time near the ending, he held the lead, reclaiming the DO7 world record for himself. After a long and hard fought battle, the world record had dropped 4 tenths lower in less than a month, but it now seemed like finally, players were starting to get close to the limit on the track, and it would be very hard to optimize DO7 further unless anything new was discovered. There had been no major strategy improvements on the track for over 4 years, and DO7 was in desperate need of a pioneer, someone who would dare to think outside the box and revolutionize the way the track would be played for years to come. Someone who would take the next step. That someone was Seriulu. After losing his record to race on again, he'd had enough of playing the track the standard way, and decided it was time to take things to the next level. Throughout his hours of playing the track, Seriulu had noticed a potential way to save a lot of time on DO7 race, by skipping the engine off block before the finish. Because if you manage to jump over the engine off block, your car could still accelerate through the entire last turn, and you would no longer have to slowly roll up the hill towards the finish. He thought his idea could save a lot of time, but the only way to find out was by daring to try it. He started experimenting with the idea, intentionally taking an exceptionally wide line across the platform, using all the space available to him to build up as much speed as possible towards the road. But still, even with near-perfect driving, he was often a few pixels too short. After doing some analysis, Riulu discovered that in order to skip the engine off block, he'd need to reach around 343 speed on the jump. But in practice, he could mostly only get up to around 340. He was just a few millimeters away and knew that it had to be possible to get a bit more speed if everything aligned perfectly. So he decided not to waste any more time in practice and started going for runs on the track. And after only a few days of trying, on the 26th of December 2013, Riulu completely revolutionized the 7 race when he got this run on the track. Ryulu had done it, 49 flat, beating Race Hans by 83 hundredths of a second, and being the first person in Trackmania history 
to skip the D07 engine off block. His run overall was solid. He fell a little bit behind Raystance's perfect start, but he was playing to get as many attempts to the end as possible. And with a few pixels to spare, he got across and gained everything and more back in the final turn. A tremendous discovery and achievement. Ariulis' record stood for the next few years unbeaten. Whoever won the world record on the track would have to face his way, and the perfection needed for the engine off skip was daunting enough to discourage most players. But in March of 2017, a familiar suspect returned to try to reclaim the record. Race Hans was back, and on the 30th of March, after learning Ariulis end approach, he too would manage to skip the engine off block. Setting a new world record of 48.96. Only two days later, the player Frevon made a stunning discovery on D07. A potential new shortcut. Well, not exactly. It was April Fool's 2017 and Frevon decided to share this groundbreaking track with the community. D07 Finish Cut. A recreation of the ending on D07, but with a few twists. First off, he had placed boosters before the uphill, allowing you to get up to a ridiculous 370 speed on the jump, and skip the engine off block with ease. Also, the checkpoint had been removed so you wouldn't crash into it. With these two changes, Frevon showed that you could theoretically pull off this shortcut jump. In order to bounce towards the finish, Frevon used a technique known as a bug slide, where by landing sideways and drifting, the car will do a very sharp slide, building up a lot of speed. If you then manage the bug slide with the nose of the car pitching upwards, the underside of the car would bounce against the road border, launching you into the air and towards the finish. Upon seeing this, everyone in the Trackmania community thought, haha, very funny Frevon, as on the original track, this shortcut was clearly impossible. Even on this meme track with unrealistic speed and no checkpoint to block your setup, it still took many attempts to get a run that went into the finish. And on the original track it was even worse, as when your engine is shut off, bug sliding does not work. The only hypothetical scenario where the D07N shortcut could work would be to somehow skip the engine off block, land sideways in a bug slide, and bounce from further away with a worse approach angle right into the finish. Only two players in Trackmania history had ever gotten across the engine off block, and nobody in their right mind would throw away an engine off skip for this meme shortcut idea. And for the next while, the D07N shortcut remained just that, an April Fool's joke. But throughout 2019, the community had a project where players collectively tried to beat all the world records on the campaign tracks in Trackmania Nations Forever. This project led Riulu to return to the game to reclaim the D07 record from Raisons, setting a new world record of 48.73, still using the normal shortcut way and skipping the final engine off block. But this record also rejuvenated talks about the D07 end shortcut, and a few players started seriously experimenting with the idea. One of those players was Drarker. In October of 2019, Drarker started playing D07 practicing the engine off skip and the shortcut, and all of a sudden, he had this attempt. For the first time, players had very real proof that the D07 shortcut was more than just a meme or an April Fool stroke, and that it could potentially be possible. Dwarker quickly started going for it on the real map, his consistency at the engine off skip was incredible, and he could usually get an attempt at the end bounce every 30 minutes or so. But after skipping the engine off block over 100 times on D07, something other players struggled to do just once, he still hadn't gotten a bounce into the finish. Seeing how close Darker was getting, Hefes decided to join the hunt on the track, and together they put in a Herculean effort to try to do the D07 shortcut playing the track for over 250 hours each, and doing thousands of attempts. Eventually, they had both skipped the engine off block over 500 times each, but neither of them had gotten a bounce that flew into the finish. And though they were getting so close, 
Many spectators following their grind were starting to lose faith in the shortcut idea, and wondered if maybe it just wasn't possible to go those few missing centimeters to reach the finish line. But Drarker and Hefest never lost faith. These pioneers continued to grind the track, as they were convinced it was just barely possible, and they wanted to prove everyone else wrong. And in December of 2020, a third player joined their efforts. Roland. Roland had been watching them try the DO7 shortcut for a while, and in the tail end of 2020, he fancied trying it himself. He quickly learned the shortcut approach from Drarker and Hefest, and soon enough, he was able to get a few end and off skips himself. And then, on the 3rd of December 2020, seemingly out of nowhere, seven years after the first end and off skip, three and a half years after the inception of the end shortcut, and over one year after Drarker and Hefest first started trying it, Roland drove this legendary run on the 07 race. Roland had done it. A perfect engine off skip combined with a perfect end bounce that sent him flying just high enough to majestically soar into the finish, setting a new world record of 45.79, shaving almost 3 seconds off the record and proving that the impossible was indeed possible. And that is where the DO7 world record stands today. But if it hadn't been for the pioneers, we might have never seen it done. It is for those who dare to think outside the box and continuously seek for new ways to improve on the 07 that we have to thank for such an incredible story as this one. And especially Hafez and Drarker, who dared to push onwards for over a year despite the seeming impossibility of the shortcut, because they believed in the idea. And let it stand as a reminder that when you see a new idea, to assess it critically rather than to just scoff it off as impossible. Because more often than not, someone will eventually go out there and prove you wrong. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, then subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with when more Trackmania content is coming out, and I will see you all in the next video. A big thank you to all my patrons for supporting the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. But that's all for now guys, until next time, have a good one.